Welcome to Late Night Weekend with Tom Lionel Weaver. Thank you. Not the best introduction, but hey, that's not what we're here for. You see, every once in a while, I get in the mood to be funny or to be ridiculous. Most of the time, I'm, I'm doing serious stuff, but this time, I don't want to do anything serious. Um, I was talking to a friend of mine some time ago. Oh, this was back in, oh, uh, back in the 80s, maybe? Late 80s, early 90s? Yeah. This guy had a tra transmission shop, and I used to run errands for him. And of course, uh, you know, he would reimburse me for my gas and all that stuff. But anyway, so I, I don't know if it was illegal. Maybe if I, maybe I shouldn't say those things. The IRS might be nearby and say, you didn't pay your taxes. Oh, no, he didn't give me much. Just enough to cover my gas. Anyway. So I'm available. You want to put me in jail, IRS? Go ahead. <laughs> anyway. What were you we talking one time? We were talking at one time. I, every once in a while, I talk so fast, my words get slurred. Anyway. We were talking, and I... I told him I wouldn't mind being a comedian, but you see, I can't make people laugh. Well, he said, Tom, if you think something is funny, someone else will too. So, this is a time where certain someone else's might be laughing their heads off. All right? I don't know how often I'm going to do this. I might do it once a weekend. Because sometimes I just got to be weird. <laughs> I mean, it, listen, if this climate change thing wouldn't be so serious, it would be funny. In fact, I often sit here and laugh my head off. And with all that lipstick that she wears, Miss Cortez looks like a clown. Anyway, and with and with a president we have, boy, he makes he he gives comedians a lot of fodder, doesn't he? But I want to I want to share a couple funny stories from my own life. My mother, oh bless her heart. <laughs> now we lived. Uh, I grew up in a little town called Lebanon, Pennsylvania, the home of Baloney. So if anybody should know Baloney, I should. I grew up with it. That and Wisconsin cheese. <laughs> oh, I, I love Wisconsin cheese. Uh, uh, Lebanon Baloney and Wisconsin cheese, the best sandwich. Sometimes I would put mustard on it, or sometimes I might put relish on it, but it's got to be Lebanon Bologna and Wisconsin cheese. Well, at any rate, uh, my mother, I've got to tell you a few things about my mother that I think are funny, so you might too. All right. I was going, I went home after school. Now, we live in a place where there was a, a steel mill nearby, and it was a very dusty neighborhood. As a matter of fact, there was so much dust. Every day, you had to sweep it off your porch, especially if you wanted to sit on it. <laughs> you know, I mean, the neighbors would stay out, especially in the summertime, neighbors would sit out and talk. Don't do that anymore, do they? Anyway, neighbors would sit out and talk. My dad and my... And you, every once in a while, you, I wondered, what in the world do they talk about this whole time? <laughs> what can they talk about? 
the news of the day. Anyway, so my dad was out with his neighbor all the time. and But so you had to sweep off the porch and the sidewalk if you every day every day meanwhile you were breathing that dust in and you know when uh, when the sun was still out and the sun was coming out of the west and and, and coming in the uh, the front door window you could see the dust in the air you really could and one day I came home and my mother was making a pinching motion in the air. You know what? Can you imagine what it is to pinch something in the air? Well, I said, Mother, what are you doing? And she said, I'm picking the dust out of the air. <laughs> picking the dust out of the air. Sounds like climate change proponents. <laughs> they want us to pick the dust out of the air. Or, or prevent the dust from going in the air, one of the two. But see, that's why I laugh at these people because they remind me of things that are so funny. Anyway. Now, it wasn't always fun. My mother didn't always provide funny stuff. Sometimes she did things really stupid. Now, my mother, you know, they, they you know what they could do? They could make a TV show, a sitcom, out of my mother's life and call it Last Woman Standing. <laughs> she was a traditional woman. She was religious. But she did some really dumb stuff. When, we, when I was a teenager, let's see, my sister... Well, got married in 1966. After that, it was just my dad, my brother, and me. So my mother was alone with three men. And one day, my father was reading a newspaper, and she said, "He says, hey, don't you guys have?" And he mentioned the name of the comic books. Yeah, we had comic books. I don't remember the name of the company, uh, but we had these. We had comic books, and they were in fair condition. I mean, we'd like read them one time and put them away. Well, he said this comic book company is going out of business, and collectors are looking for magazines, comic book magazines in good shape. Well, yeah, we had them. I mean, can you imagine a Superboy comic book being worth a thousand dollars? Wow. I mean, hey, that was big money back then. <laughs> anyway, so yeah, we went to look for these comic books and we couldn't find them. You know what else we couldn't find? Our bubblegum baseball cards. That's right. I think I had a rookie of the year card of Richie Allen. It gave his stats for his first year. And he was rookie of the year for the Philadelphia Phillies that year. Anyway. So, yeah, I had that. Well... We looked high and low for these magazines. Everywhere. We looked for them everywhere. Except where they were. <laughs> well, we asked my mother, Do you know, did you see our comic books? Oh, I threw those things away. <laughs> 
Can you imagine a woman doing that, living with three men? <laughs> yeah, that wasn't very funny. Although it sounds funny now. Yeah. And not only did she throw our comic books away, she threw our baseball cards away. Why on earth would somebody do that? Anyway. Yeah, that's a little bit about, about my life. And I think those are some funny stories. But it all wasn't funny. And I'm not going to give you any of that. Maybe someday. Now, a back to politics. Did you know Alf claimed that Donald Trump stole his hair? Kind of looks like that, doesn't it? Anyway, remember Alf? I think that was a funny show. But you know, the funniest show I've ever seen on TV was called Mr. Ed. Folks, I want you to go to YouTube and I want you to look up the first episode of Mr. Ed. And if you don't laugh your head off, you don't have a sense of humor. And then, yeah, I always said, if I had the money, I'm going to open a sense of humor store. Because a lot of people don't have a sense of humor. At least, not as warped as mine, anyway. Yeah. It was there. I mean, can you imagine? Can you imagine? Here's a guy, just got married, or was married for a while, just bought a house, and he has to carry his wife over the threshold. At least, that's what she said. Why don't you got to carry me over the threshold? So he picked her up, and he forgot the key. <laughs> so, he said, you have to get the key, honey. It's in one of my pockets. So she's... <laughs> <laughs> going through his pockets and uh, tickling him along the way. <laughs> oh, I think I forgot to. I think I forgot to get him from Mr. Reeves. So he's carry. He's going to put her down. Oh no no no! You can't put me down. It's bad luck. So he starts carrying her as he's chasing Mr. Reeves for the key. Along comes Roger Addison, their neighbor. Uh, and he says uh, something about, what are you doing? And he says, oh, I'm, I'm carrying my wife over the threshold. And he says, aren't you going the wrong way? <laughs> yeah. And, by, and then he hands off his wife to Mr. Addison. He says, uh, I'll be right back. So he goes, gets the key from Mr. Reeves, and he comes back, and instead of taking his wife back from Mr. Addison, he says, follow me. <laughs> he go, goes, gets the key. He then grabs his wife from Mr. Addison and takes her over the threshold. He puts her down, and he really kisses her. And Mr. Addison said, well, this is where I come in, and he walks away. I want to tell you something. That part of the first episode was so funny. So, anyway. Okay, uh, that's a late night weekend for now. Because I've already went 15 minutes. <laughs> or approaching 15 minutes. You know, how's that for a monologue? Anyway, thank you for listening. You have yourselves a good week.